rejoicing in the resurrection, let us go forth in peace. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Please sit down. Good morning, everybody. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Oh, you are quiet this morning. <laughs> Perhaps it's all the. Mm. Um, the Lord be with you. And also with you. Thank you, I can hear you now. Um, Special Sunday, I'm afraid, for me. A uh, little bit nervous. Um, if you ask the Thursday crowd, I was all over the place on Thursday because that was my first Mass now that Father Jim has gone. But um, bear with me. Be relatively kind to me unless I do something, you know, clearly out beyond the pale. It's a lovely morning. I'm delighted to welcome you all here to worship at St. James's on this fifth Sunday of Easter. A series of very interesting readings this morning, and the Gospel talks about our Lord being the vine. So as we come to worship, we bring before God those times when we have fallen short of what God has expected of us. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with the living bread. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We stand for the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, who through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, have overcome death and opened to us the gate of everlasting life. Grant that, as by your grace going before us, you put into our minds good desires, so by your continual help we may bring them to good effect, through Jesus Christ our risen Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. An angel of the Lord said to Philip, get up and go towards the south to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is the wilderness road. So he got up and went. Now there was an Ethiopian eunuch, a court official of the Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, in charge of her entire treasury. He had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning home. Seated in his chariot, he was reading, to the, reading the prophet Isaiah. Then the spirit said to Philip, go over to this chariot and join him. So Philip ran up and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah. He asked, do you understand what you're reading? 
He replied, how can I unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to get in and sit beside him. Now the passage of the scripture that he was reading was this. Like a sheep, he was led to the slaughter. And like a lamb, silent before its sharer, so he does not open his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who can describe his generation? For his life is taken away from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, about whom, may I ask, does this prophet say this? About himself or about someone else? Then Philip began to speak, and starting with this scripture, he proclaimed to him the good news about Jesus. As they were going along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, Look, here is water. What is to prevent me from being baptized? He commanded the chariot to stop, and both of them, Philip and the eunuch, went down into the water, and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away. The eunuch saw him no more and went on his way rejoicing. But Philip found himself at Azotus, and he, as he was passing through the region, he proclaimed the good news to all the towns until he came to Caesarea. This is the word of the Lord. A reading from the first letter of John. Beloved, let us love one another, because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his only Son into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God lives in us, and his love is perfect in us. By this we know that we abide in him and he is in us, because he has given us of his spirit. And we have seen and do testify that the Father has sent his Son as the Savior of the world. God abides in those who confesses that Jesus is the Son of God and they abide in God. So we have known and believed the love that God had for us. God is love, and those who abide in love abide in God, and God abides in them. Love has been perfect among, among us in this, that we may have boldness on the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts our fear, for fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears, has not reached perfection in love. We love because he first loved us. Those who say, I love God, 
and hate their brothers or sisters are liars, for those who do not love a brother or sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. The commandments we have from him is this, those who love God must love their brothers and sisters also. This is the word, word of the Lord. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, I am the vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit, Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from me you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, Ask for whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. speak in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please sit down. When I was at university, um, I was president of Anglicans in UEA. UEA was the university where I went. And every Thursday lunchtime, we had a lunchtime mass, and there was a particular person I had such a crush on. Dear, oh dear. I had such a crush. And um, at that Thursday Mass that week, this person read the passage that Barbara read to us all about love and love abiding in us. And I, ooh, I thought it was wonderful. Anyway, that person went on to get married very happily. And I did the intercessions at their wedding. And that was a good ending, a good ending for me. The first thing that strikes me about our lesson from Acts is where, uh, is where Philip is sent to the road that goes from Jerusalem to Gaza. Now, don't we hear about Gaza most days on the news? Don't we hear about the awful um, situation that the Palestinians find themselves in, either because the uh, um, Hamas, the local authority, as it were, won't let them do certain things, or because the Israelis stop um, supplies and goods coming in so that they don't have enough, not least at the moment don't have enough medicines and vaccines. So immediately for me, I'm thinking, 
Wow. And here we are 2,000 years ago talking about going to Gaza. And it was a wilderness road. A wilderness road suggests that there wasn't very many people around. And then this very important, extremely important person comes along in, I think of it as being a, a terribly um, well-adorned um, chariot, carriage, for this uh, Ethiopian eunuch. So in this lesson, we think about, we're brought to think about people who are in the edge of our society, who aren't of the normal, because an Ethiopian eunuch was probably because he'd been emasculated, but it could also have been, so I'm told, that he was homosexual. Either way, he was, normally he was considered unclean, but at the time of this festival in Jerusalem, where he had come, he was allowed to enter the temple. And I think it's important for us to remember that, that this person who was um, doubly um, unclean was allowed to enter the temple. And he is a, we could say that he was already open to thinking about faith because he'd already been to the worship, but also because he was reading his Bible as he was sitting there in his carriage and he was reading the prophet Isaiah and it just so happened to be uh, like a sheep he was led to the slaughter and like a lamb silent before its shearer, so he does not open his mouth. In, humi in his humiliation, justice was denied for him. We immediately um, connect that reading from Isaiah with our Lord, and we think about the events on Good Friday. It's so obvious for us that we would do that. And it's interesting that he, uh, the eunuch is reading this, this passage. I wish we knew what his name was, um, rather than just describing him in that way. And Philip says, and I think it's a very helpful question, do you understand what you're reading about? Now that might be a bit too direct, a bit too of a, much of a closed question, which prompts the answer yes or no, and could close the conversation down completely. A, a, an alternative way is, uh, oh, what are you reading about there? How does it make you feel? What are the thoughts in your mind? I'm thinking about um, godly play and the sorts of questions you ask the, um, the young people that you do with them, so it gets their mind thinking about it. Now, you have to be very, very brave. I'm not sure even I could do it. Um, to say to someone who you see reading the Bible, oh, what are you reading there? What do you make of it? But there is an opening. There is an opening for us. And Philip, having been sent by the angel, shall we say the Holy Spirit, to go to this place, and he was an evangelist, Philip, he says, um, well, let me explain it to you. And the Ethiopian man who invites him to come and sit in his very smart, um, I think of it being as a limousine, and as he gets in and he gives him a glass of champagne, and they share a glass of champagne and chat about the scriptures. And then they come to some water. And he said, oh, look, there's a pool of water. Why don't... What's to stop me being baptised? This Ethiopian is so open to responding to God, so open to the faith. And Philip goes with it. And Philip takes him further and he is baptised. Marvellous story. Absolutely marvellous story. And wonderful to picture it and to, to see how it is. I think there's a message there for us just to be 
occasionally take small risks. If we see someone, whatever. Mike and I just had a really rather nice encounter as we processed outside. There's a, there was a white van parked um, right on the corner and this chap had his window open and as we were going past he leant out and he said, oh father, um, can I ask you a question? Does it matter whether um, you're cremated or buried? And I said, no, not at all. God, is, uh, God has already received your soul then. Um, he's not particularly bothered as, as to the bodily remains. And he said, thank you. And we both felt that we were called to go round to be able to have that brief conversation. And I have found in the, uh, how many years? Quite a lot. 16 years since I was ordained that if I'm out with my collar on, people do ask questions or people do say things. But that was, that was a really nice encounter. And then in uh, the New Testament lesson and in the Gospel, I want to talk about the word abides because it's there a great deal. It's there a great deal. Now, an alternative could have been live or stay or remain. But there's something much more poetical for me about abide. And there's something more long-lasting, something that needs a little bit of work to make it feel like you are abiding somewhere. And I think perhaps the way for us to think about it is that we all abide here at St. James. It's a positive place for us to come to, I hope. It's a comfortable place for us to come to. I don't mean comfortable in terms of the brown chairs, Jill, but um, that it's, it, you know, you're with people you know, you feel comfortable, you feel welcomed. But you can't just come, can you? You have to bring your whole self here and to be ready to worship be ready to listen to the lessons and join in with the prayers and to receive the sacrament, the sacrament of Holy Communion. And you have to work at that in that you have to make the decision to come here. I wonder if you all can remember the first time you made up your own mind to go to church. I was 15. I was a very strange teenager, as I've told you before. My teenage rebellion was to go to church. And I've been there ever since. But I wonder how it's been for you. Because I would say that that's the Holy Spirit working within you and moving you to a place where you can abide in our Lord's love. You can abide in our Lord's community. Because you, in that abiding, you feel loved, you feel held, you feel that this is your home. In our uh, reading from 1 John, God loves us. Love, uh, let us love one another because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. It doesn't say everyone who loves God is born of God, but everyone who loves. And there's a special virtuous circle going on there that God loves us 
And I guess we love God as part of that, but it doesn't need to be mentioned. But, but what is so important is that we love one another. And in the way you all look after each other, you are demonstrating God's love to each other. In the way that you care for each other, are concerned for each other, and make sure you know how people are getting on, shows that you love God and you love one another. And therefore, if there was a person who knew you came, didn't, or, yeah, a person who knew you came to church and thought, well, this is very nice of them to look after me. They are also receiving love from God. And as we come here and as we receive the sacrament, we are as it were, by osmosis, we are abiding in God. As to Jesus and the vine grower, I am, as Betty can tell you, I am a very poor gardener. I need advice regularly. And... Uh, must be two years ago, even three years ago, Betty and Hillary came. Yeah, three. Betty and Hillary, dear Hillary, came and spent some time with me in my garden and cut that, dig this, do that. And as they were saying that, they were getting on with it as well. It was delightful. And I think the lesson there is none of us know everything. And I recognize I'm a poor gardener. I could improve, but actually I'm not. I want it to look nice, but I worry that I'm, that I'm going to get something wrong. Each of us can learn from each other. Each of us has special things that we are so good at, because we can't all be good at everything. So in that way, we build each other up as we encourage each other in those things that bring God to life in our lives. So, beloved congregation of St. James's, take risks sometimes. Take risks in demonstrating that you love God and God loves you. And be prepared to learn whatever age you are, that there are new things to learn about God and about each other. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We stand together to say the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. In the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us sit or kneel to pray to the Father. We offer our prayers to our Heavenly Father and we pray for the peace of the world, remembering all areas where there is violence or conflict. 
We ask your blessing on all who are striving for a better world, all working for juster laws, all who are working for peace between nations, and all who are engaged in healing divisions and relieving poverty. Particularly this morning, we remember all the people of India and the enormous problems and difficulties that they face. And we pray for all those, particularly medical staff, who are alleviating suffering as best they can. Bless them and strengthen them to build your kingdom here on earth. Lord, in your mercy, We pray for our nation and our church. We pray that our church, by its example, might be a beacon to lighten the way forward with all the difficulties that exist. Almighty and everlasting God, who formed your church to be of one heart and soul in the power of the resurrection, grant your people such a measure of your grace that our lives may be hallowed, our way directed, and our work made fruitful to the good of your church and the glory of your holy name. Lord, in your mercy. Merciful Lord, we ask your care and compassion on all who suffer. Remember all those suffering in our congregation or in our families. And we name those people either in the silence of our hearts or aloud. Heavenly Father, the comfort of the sad and the strength of those who suffer, hear the prayers of your children who cry out of any trouble, and to every distressed soul grant mercy, relief, and refreshment. Lord, in your mercy. Remember with thanksgiving all those who have died and now rest in your peace. We pray for the recently departed, particularly the souls of Kathy and Bishop John Bruno. Remember all those who died in the tragedy in Israel. Remember all past members of this congregation. And on the anniversary of their deaths, remember the souls of Albert Denton, Jonathan Franklin, Marie Yvonne Summer, James Rosenthal Sr., Nora Wareham, and Harry Leach. Lord God, creator of all, you have made us creatures of this earth, but have also promised us a share in life eternal. May all who have died in the peace of Christ share with your saints in the joy of heaven, where there is neither sorrow nor pain, but life everlasting. Lord, in your mercy, And we pray for our own church here at St. James and give thanks to God for all the good things we have received. We remember and give thanks for the ministry of Father Jim and all we learnt from him in the five and a half years he was here. And now we pray for Father Mark 
and the new duties and responsibilities that he now has in our church. We remember our parish prayer. Father, pour out your spirit upon your people of St. James Merton and grant them a new vision of your glory, a new experience of your power, a new faithfulness to your word and a new consecration to your service that aided by the prayers of St. James, the spirit of Christ's healing love may grow among this community and your kingdom come. In our new circumstances, we need to look again at our mission action plan, decide what our priorities must now be and what we hope to achieve here. We pray that we may learn to abide naturally and happily within this place. Lord, in your mercy. And now we join our prayers with those of Christians throughout the world, with St. James our patron, and with Mary, the mother of our Lord, as we say together, Hail Mary, full of grace. Merciful Father, Amen. Will you please stand for the peace? Jesus came and stood amongst his disciples. Then were they glad when they saw the Lord. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Give each other a wave, please. Peace be with you. And the choir are now going to sing a hymn if you'd like to be seated.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Father, we give thanks and praise through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living word, through whom you have created all things who was sent by you in your great goodness to be our Saviour. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh. As your Son, born of the Blessed Virgin, he lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms for us on the cross. He put an end to death by dying for us and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. So he fulfilled your will and one for you, a holy people. But chiefly are we bound to praise you because you raised him gloriously from the dead. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was offered for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death, he has destroyed death. And by his rising to life again, he has restored to us everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim our great and your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Will you please stand? Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and blood who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And so, Father, excuse me. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy 
to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup so that we in the company of Mary, the mother of God, James and all the saints may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Alleluia. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed.
A prayer for those who are unable to join us in person today. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and I unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. On your reading sheet, could we join together in reading the post-communion prayer? Eternal God, whose Son, Jesus Christ, is the way, the truth, and the life, grant us to walk in his way, to rejoice in his truth, and to share his risen life who is alive and reigns now and forever. Amen. Notices? Notices? Yep. Yeah. Um, Father Jim has asked, us, has asked me to remind um, us all that he is um, preaching at St. Mary's Merton at Evensong and I think it's March the 16th, May the, May the 16th, sorry, <laughs> May the 16th at 6.30. Um, and he would obviously love people to be there, but if you would like to be there, please let him know so that he can book it through with um, St. Mary's. This is my first go at doing a bulletin notice sheet, so um, you're, meant to, you're meant to say thank you very much, Father Mark, that's really well done. <laughs> um, please read there um, the note from Father Jim, it's really lovely and uh, very special and I know it's very much heartfelt from him. Um, he didn't join us at the quiz last night. And Nathan said he knew he would get upset if he saw us. So that's, that's how much he thinks of us and loves us. And we know we love him too. So please, please hold him in your prayers during this time of transition. And as they pack up and move to um, Wood Hatch. Wood Hatch is the part of Rygate that they're going to be living in. Um, and then this is slightly um, un uncomfortable, but anyway, um, you might want to read the note from the church wardens, which Simon um, said last week as well. Um, I'm delighted I'm going to be looking after you during the interregnum. I think it's really quite wonderful. Um, I, you already know me. I already know you to a certain extent, and I'm really looking forward to this time during the vacancy as we work together. Um, but uh, just to be clear, it's the blessed church wardens who are in charge, not me. Um, so if there's anything you um, need to bring to their attention, please do. Please do. Thank you for being here this morning. Um, thank you for the, sorry for the rambling during the sermon. 
and uh, we're going to go outside to immediately afterwards to sing the Regina Chaley. So do please just follow the procession. And I hope I'll manage to come around and say goodbye to everyone as we do that. Thank you. And those of you who don't join in with Zoom at the moment, um, I've put there the telephone number you can ring to join in with the Zoom meeting. And then next to the uh, services this week are the Zoom IDs so you can see what you can join in with. So those of you who have not yet joined in with Zoom but would um, feel able to do it with your telephone, it's there. Um, it, I'm very keen that we should be as inclusive as possible. And uh, that's why I'm going to be talking about this sort of thing quite frequently. Thank you. Will you please stand for God's blessing? The Lord be with you. And also with you. Almighty God, whose Son Jesus Christ is the resurrection and the life, raise us who trust in him from the death of sin to the life of righteousness, that we may sink those things which are above where he reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you and those whom you love forevermore. Amen. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Amen.